Good morning and welcome to Cincy Lifestyle. Thank you for starting your morning with us today. Uh, and we've got a number of things cooking for you in the we show. Did. We've got some really great dancing yes, coming. Yes, I'm uh, excited. They're so cute. They are. They absolutely are. Number <laughs> of stuff coming your way. Bees, the whole nine yards. Yes. All of that. Uh, just a reminder that things are changing. So mm -hmm. we're in kind of a changing landscape right now because of COVID-19. So yes, that's affecting are. now. We've heard the St. Patrick's Day Parade, the opening day parade. Yes. Apparently the game for now is still on, but uh, the opening day game. But you know, just be aware, just check and do all that you can to uh, take good care of yourself and those around you. That's good. That's good advice. The point of all this, of course, to keep large crowd people from gathering in large crowds That's where it's right. more likelihood of passing on something if someone's infected. So that's right. Just, be careful just keep stay there. safe. But you know what, Clyde? One thing that can't be canceled is when a woman is having a baby. And that baby's <laughs> not going to say stay in just because of COVID-19. Yeah, nope. They're coming. So that led us to go to the top 10 boys and girls names. Since they got to be named <laughs> once they get here. They do have to be named. So we've got the top 10 list for you. you got a magnifying glass? <laughs> no, I'll read them I for mean, you. Oh, Number okay, one for boys names <laughs> is Liam. Oh, okay. Number two, Noah. Three, William. Number four, Oliver. I was kind of surprised about Oliver. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Five, Lucas. Six, Benjamin. Seven, Elijah. Elijah. Eight, James. James mm -hmm. is making a comeback, which is nice. And nine, Henry. Uh huh. Henry. And number 10 is Alexander. Clyde came in 11th. Yeah, I'm sure it did. Right. <laughs> Just like Mona came in 11th. But first in the girls' names is Emma. Second is Olivia. Third, Ava. Four, Isabella, Charlotte is number five, Sophia, number six, that's a daughter of one of our employees here. Uh -huh. Amelia is number seven, Mia, Myla, I had not heard that one before. Myla is number mm. nine, mm. and Harper is number 10. Harper. Harper is Harper. number 10, yes. Okay, Harper, just let that sink in. Harper is number 10. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, moving on. Hey, do you like Kung Pao chicken? Mm. Do you crave baklava? You got a Jones for a good burrito? Well, you can find those foods and so much more because it is Cincinnati's International Festival. And that's the reality and all that's going to be happening at the International I'm sorry, the International Festival of Northern Kentucky. It's going to be celebrated this weekend. But you know what? It's not just about food. Right, Clyde? That is absolutely right, Mona. There's a whole lot to be celebrated, and some of that's going to happen on this program this morning, as you can see. I'm here with Raquel Diaz Infante. She is with Cincinnati Baila Dance Academy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your kind invitation. Oh, happy to do it. So tell me a little bit about the Academy and, and, and what it's teaching. So we're dedicated to the cultural formation of our kids, exposing them to our Hispanic heritage. And we share this with our kids and with our community. We have had tremendous support from Artswave and the Cincinnati Hispanic Chamber. So we have performed in the most gorgeous events. <laughs> but we also want to give back to the community. So we perform as well in our small elementary schools just showcasing how rich the, the Hispanic culture is. And, and what's the average age of the young ladies who dance with you? Oh, we have had from, two, she started when she was two years old, and we have a senior graduating. So we have ambassadors from all ages and all backgrounds. One of our teachers is a full American, no sure. Hispanic heritage. Sure. Okay. It's just because the dances are so beautiful. And what led you to decide you wanted to start the academy? So we wanted to share our Hispanic heritage. We migrated and we wanted to, our kids are fully American kids, but we want them to, sh to see what the Hispanic er heritage has. Sure. And not only our own kids, but the whole community. We have kids, we rehearse in uh, Blue Ash, but we have kids coming from Milford, Hamilton, Mason, we have okay. plenty of kids from there. Okay, super. I'm gonna step out and let the girls do what they do. Fantastic. All righty, thank you. So thank much. you.
Yay, all right. Great job, young ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate you being with us. Raquel, thank you so much for being with us as well. Thank you for your invitation. Indeed. I was tempted to join in, but I decided not to. <laughs> Didn't want to show them up. Mona? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you resisted that temptation, Clyde. Appreciate it. Well, there's a new awareness of the importance of a tiny insect. Many of us consider a nuisance. Bees. In fact, bees are critical to our ecology and recognizing that there's a growing movement to build and sustain bee colonies and that commitment to the environment comes with a sweet sticky benefit and welcome. I would like to welcome Samantha and Scott Gordon, the owners of Behaven Honey. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. For having us. Thank so you. tell us about Behaven and what inspired you to open up this business. Well, um, Around 2005, I read the novel, The Secret Life of Bees, and it made beekeeping sound almost enchanting. And uh, I thought I'd like to see what that was about. I didn't, I didn't really thought too much about it, so we put a couple of hives in my parents' back field, and two hives became 10, and then came to 40, until we started getting some things from the hives, bees, wax, and honey, and just got a little creative with it, and, uh, and just really learned about um, taking care of the bees through that. That's fantastic. Okay, I read that book too. That's a really good book. It is. It is. Yes. It didn't inspire me to do all that you did, <laughs> but it inspired you. So tell us some of the products that you brought with you. Well, um, we brought some lanterns that we make with beeswax and uh, some other candles that we have. And we also have um, local honey and we make hand salves and lip balms all with beeswax and then Scott makes creamed honey and we have three different kinds of jam that Scott also makes with honey. Oh yeah. wow, so tell me what goes into making these products and how long it takes to go from hive to product. Well, we, um, once we get some honey off the hives, then uh, it, we take the wax from the hives as well. And, and we, we create quite a bit, so we get other honey and wax from other beekeepers in the area too. Um, so we have to melt down the wax and clean it a little bit and then we pour it into molds. This I use a balloon and some pressed flowers. Um, the, the creamed honey, Scott, do you want to say yeah. honey? Well, the creamed honey is basically just pure honey. There's not really anything added. We have some cinnamon in one, okay. but it's the pure honey. It's the crystallized honey. Whenever you, mm -hmm. the honey goes to crystal in the, in the jar on cold days, it's just the temperature kind of just is it uh, does, crystallizing. Yes. So um, in Europe, they use that as a spread on bread or biscuits or scones, and, and oh. we call it creamed honey for the creamy texture. Wow. And the jam, we actually uh, started growing blueberries and some other fruit um, okay. along with the bees, and um, so we just kind of leverage that and use honey and, and fruit and create jams with it. So. Okay. Well, we want to make sure people know where they can get your wonderful products. So where mm -hmm. are you located and how can people get more information? We're at 1815 Elm Street, almost right across from Finley Market. And uh, we, our website is behavenhoney.com. All right. I'm to have my eye on that little frog there. <laughs> I collect frogs. So yeah. come out and see all the products that are available. Thank all you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. you being here. Yeah. Behaven. You. All right. Clyde. You and frogs, Mona, who knew? You know, early histories of College Hill describe it as a wilderness overlooking Cincinnati over the years. Cincinnatians have turned its arboreal beauty into one of the city's 52 urban neighborhoods. College Hill remains a desirable settlement, and to see why, all you have to do is go around the block. College Hill is coming into its own. You see it in places both large and small, New apartments on Hamilton Avenue. New businesses, such as the recently opened Tortiera Garcia. This neighborhood, home to more than 14,000 people, is fulfilling the promise from 200 years ago when the first settlers bought land along what is now the community's spine, Hamilton Avenue. Flower pots maintained by the Garden Club have replaced what was a wilderness in the early 19th century. College Hill was originally known as Pleasant Hill, a suburb for the wealthy, exemplified by Laurel Court, the Gilded Age manse of champion paper founder Peter Thompson, appropriately Laurel Court sitting on the highest spot in Cincinnati and frequently now serving as an event location. The city of Cincinnati finally annexed College Hill in 1923. Pleasant Hill became College Hill in recognition of the two colleges established there, the 
Ohio Female College, which operated until the 1870s, and the Farmers College, later Belmont College, still later a military school. Mercy Macaulay High School, an all-girls Catholic school, joins nearby Aiken, a public school, in continuing College Hill's dedication to learning. Its collegial past helped make College Hill one of the most diverse communities in the region, a diversity still evident today. And the College Hill Urban Redevelopment Corporation is in its 10th year of using racial, gender, economic, and age diversity to drive community growth. You can see their efforts in the array of businesses on the hill. Veteran establishments such as Schwartz Jewelers, cheek by jowl with Marty's Hops and Vines, just down the street from Bacall's Cafe. Hodap Funeral Home faces east towards the College Hill Coffee House, catering to a clientele who come for the coffee, the cards, the companionship, and especially the comfort. To the south, a southern fish and chicken restaurant that promises its food will hook you. And when your soul needs the food only nature provides, College Hill offers green space aplenty at three parks, such as here in Laboito Woods. You can share more than two miles of trails with deer, fox, raccoons, and turtles here, or you can just sit and listen. Green space isn't limited to the parks. Just take a stroll on College Hill's leafy, shaded streets, which feel forested. With its mix of housing styles, both luxurious and simple, you may find that College Hill exudes charm, welcome, and an open invitation to come or come back and spend a little time just wandering around the block. Well, when you think of soap, you might think of what you see in supermarkets made and packaged by big companies. Well, our next guests actually make their own soap and have taken it to a whole new level. Crystal Guffey and Steve Mullins are co-owners of Lemonwood Soap Company. Thank you both for being here. Thanks Thank for you. having it us. It smells so good, right? <laughs> this Thank area, you. I'm telling you, I'm enjoying this. Thank so you. how did you all get into making soap? So uh, my grandparents actually uh, were farmers and soap making was something that they um, did on their farm. So I knew about it at a young age. And when I graduated grad school, um, you know, I needed some hobbies and something to do creatively. So I, um, you know, I just learned how to do it and took off with it. Well, it's really taken off. Um, but you all are about more than just soap. Yes. You've got a whole lot of other things. We do. What do you have? Yeah. What did you bring so, with you today? So, um, of course, we have our soap. We have our loofah soaps, which is soap Ooh. with a loofah inside of it. Um, oh, soap with a loofah in front. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is neat. So you That's can exfoliate this? and wash at oh, the same time. Oh, genius. <laughs> and then we have our body scrub, which is also an exfoliator, but also a moisturizer. Mm -hmm. And we have our whipped avocado body butter. Um, so that's avocado um, butter that's that's been whipped and um, some other goodies added to it. And then we have our lotion, which is made with um, our homegrown aloe. Um, and we also have our bath bombs here. Yes. Um, we have all kinds of different This is what smells. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're very, super good. They're very fragrant. Yes. Um, and then we have our natural home cleaning line, which is new this year. Okay. Um, so we're really proud of this. We have some um, all-purpose cleaners, and we have some dishwash dishwashing paste. Okay. And Steve, how did you get involved with this? Well, um, I supported her hobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I dragged him in. Uh, no, I didn't drag him in. <laughs> and then uh, she started doing it, and it seemed like it was fun. So I started, you know, doing a little bit here and a little mm -hmm, bit there. Mm -hmm. She would tell me, you know, do this, do that, you know. And I started, you know, I started making the, the bath bombs with her and the loofah soaps. And mm -hmm. this year, last year, I decided that I wanted to start something else. So <clears throat> I started the men's line. Oh, wow. So uh, we have beard balm, beard oil, and uh, soap that is scented for men. <laughs> okay, so um, tell me about, uh, you say that your soap helps make women strong. Tell yes. me about that right quick. Yeah, Just so when we started with, um, with the business, I knew that that was something that I wanted to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to support and collaborate with other women. Um, I just think it's something that's 
uh, really important to do. And um, so one of the things that we do is we actually buy all of our raw materials from women-owned businesses. Okay. Yeah. That is so, that is admirable. Thank you. So thank you for doing that. So yeah. quickly, where can mm -hmm. people find you and get some of your wonderful products? Uh, you can find us on lemonwoodsoap.com, which is our website. We can find out more about our products, order our products. You can also see a list of our shows, upcoming shows. And we can also see us at uh, Wednesdays at the Village Green Farmer's Market in Fairfield. Mm -hmm. Or Thursdays, you can see us at Nadira's Farmer's Market. All right. Yeah. Steve, Crystal, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. it. Woo, our, our studio sound <laughs> smells so good. <laughs> Clyde. Okay, Mona, thanks a lot. Coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, medical marijuana is now legal, but what are the rules? We'll talk to the people at Prevention First about what you can and can't do with a medical marijuana card. All that whole lot more in just a few minutes. In June 2016, marijuana was legalized in Ohio for medical use, but the laws can be confusing. And here today to help us better understand cannabis as medicine and the Ohio Medical Marijuana Control Program are Lauren Halschel, an AmeriCorps public ally working as a program assistant with Prevention First, and Charla Henderson, coordinator of the Butler County Prevention Coalition. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having us. All right, first off, give us an overview of this program. Yeah, so within the program, there are a couple things that you need to be able to qualify for a medical marijuana card. Um, the first is to be diagnosed with one of the 21 qualifying conditions. Um, the second is to be 21 years of age or older or have a guardian in charge of your health care. And number three is to receive a recommendation from a qualifying physician. So there are a lot of misconceptions about medical marijuana. So talk to us about those. Yeah, so there are a couple misconceptions that we like to talk about. Um, the first one is that just because it is a recommendation from a physician that it is safe, but just like other prescription medications and other legal medications, they can all have adverse effects. So it's important to keep that in mind and ask your physician as many questions as possible about your uh, medical marijuana card. Um, another misconception that we like to talk about is how medical marijuana is legally allowed to be used in Ohio. Um, even with a medical marijuana card under no circumstance, is it allowed to be combusted or smoked? Okay. All right, so you also mentioned about talking to your doctor as well. And there are questions we need to ask and information we need to know. Charla, okay. tell us. Yes, so we like to kind of understand this in five major target areas when we share this information. And one is going to be workplace. So under the program, by no means is an organization required to accept your medical marijuana use. So employers are still allowed to hire or rehire or drug test based off marijuana use in their organization. Secondly, is going to be housing. So the public housing program or housing choice voucher program are not required to accept medical marijuana use and often will deny medical marijuana card holders in their application process. Then third, most people think that insurance is gonna cover their medical marijuana. And by no means under the program is insurance able to cover a recommending physician visit or the purchase of actual medical marijuana in a dispensary. Fourth is education. So under several federal policies, school staff, students, and faculty are not under any means allowed to use, possess, or store medical marijuana on a, a college campus or a school campus premises. And that is um, really a good information we want to share with students and college age people because it could put them at risk for losing federal loans, on-campus housing, or grant opportunities. And the last but not least, gifting of medical marijuana. By no means under the program are you allowed to gift of any size or any quantity, someone medical marijuana. You can't share or exchange um, because it's supposed to be specifically for the person with the recommendation. Wow, I did not know all of that about <laughs> medical marijuana, but it's really important to know. So there's an opportunity, Lauren, coming up that we need to know about. Yes, absolutely. We're really excited about this. Um, Prevention First is hosting a panel on March 12th at 6.30. Um, it'll be a Facebook Live panel. We will have a recommending physician, a healthcare attorney that specializes in cannabis law. So um, we're very excited about that. And as always, if you are looking for any more information, you can visit Prevention First website at prevention-first.org. All right, sounds good. Ladies, thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> thank you for joining us. That is Cincy Lifestyle for Thursday, March 12th and reach out to us. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Indeed. In the meantime, I'll be misbehaving. Oh. Oh.
Thanks for watching our video. And if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, we love to say it, make it a great day.